Stay a while and listen. Hello, welcome to the Freak Show. Bumpy Big Squiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I start my coverage of Age of Fear, the Undead King Gold Edition. It is releasing today on Steam, June 11th, 2019. In fact, it should already be out by the time this video goes up, and you guys can grab it for your very own selves. It's a fantastic game from everything that I've seen and the others in the series that I've played. And we're going to hop in. We're going to begin playing for the very first time on the Human Campaign. But I did do a little bit of live streaming yesterday and played the Rise of the Necromancer. Just a, about an hour or two. And, again, a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to returning to that one. I think, I think I'm think i saving the best for last. I don't know. We'll have to see. Maybe, maybe the Human Campaign's better. I don't know. I, it's probably personal preference. Anyway, let's hop in and begin, shall we? All right, so we can go with Novice, which is easy. Oh, it actually gives us a little breakdown. Uh, players will receive discounts when recruiting units and can recruit any number of units. Permanent wounds are very rare. All players will employ only basic tactics and skills. Sorry, AI players. I just glanced at it. Uh, this level is recommended for casual players. Then you have experience. It's basically your default, the way the developer assumes and expects people to play. And then he's like, hey, you know what? There's people that are really good. Let's go ahead and make the AI have better units. You can't rely on individual advantage anymore. Teamwork and sound strategy are essential. We will receive more experience, and I will be able to develop them further during the campaign. This level is not fair, and only hardcore gamers should attempt it. This is default for Russian players, as you guys are gluttons for punishment. I never read that before. That's fantastic. All right, and a player will have an unfair advantage, or AI player will have unfair advantages. See, I can't read AI, apparently. And use all tricks and tactics. Players' units will receive permanent wounds, decreasing their abilities. Okay, that's not good. Death Seeker difficulty can be selected only upon the start of a new campaign. Once lowered during the campaign, it will not be available again. Save game during battles is disabled. That's not good. And playing on this will result in frustration and possibly hair loss as you will rip it all out. Well, we're going to hop in. We're going to begin. Take us away. Tell us a story, good sir. In the name of King William, I challenge you. Time to put a stop to your foul schemes. Oh, yet another puny knight with a big mouth. You will be destroyed for your evils. The Holy Church will look after that. Excuse me, Mr. Paladin. I did not notice this white horse of yours earlier. Actually, why do you always have to have a white horse? Is brown not good enough? How about chestnut horse? It's a special paladin only breed. The perks of profession. I'm sure you understand. Anyhow, where was I? You will be destroyed. Can, can we please hurry? It's not that I, I don't want to hear you out. I, I just, I have corpses to raise, and I'm, I'm sure you understand. Well, that's not good. You know, there. What? Sorry? Did he just tell him what just happened? I feel like this is not going my way. Uh, we're, we're watching the battle right now, though. Uh-huh. You may defeat me, but more will come. Sure, your kind is always welcome here. The Knights of King William are well fed. I like to work with high-quality bones. So, they found us. I must talk to Master. Our plans need to be accelerated. I was an observer. I was. Didn't expect to lose my first battle. Edward, son of Boren, faced the same challenges as many young noblemen in the lands near Redcastle. As the fourth son of a minor noble house, he had not even a horse or a decent sword to call his own. However, what he lacked in material possessions, he made up in prowess, courage, and determination as he showed at King William's hunting party. With a horse and weaponry borrowed from his eldest brother, he did his family proud. Edward's steady hand and careful aim meant that he could fell a deer at the farthest distance, drop a goose swiftly, and spear a charging boar through the heart before it could do the same to him with its razor tusks. But Edward was still forced to consider the outing a failure, for despite distinguishing himself in the hunt, he was unable to better his standing by garnering either the sponsorship of a wealthy merchant or the attentions of a well-dowried maiden. As Edward slowly made his way back to his tent, his thoughts drifted to the injustice that birth and wealth count for so much more than merit and honor. 
when the only foes to be had were forest creatures or tourney opponents with blunted weapons, there was little chance to achieve glory, wealth, or respect through martial skill. The land had known long years of relative peace and prosperity, with the dark times of the past only spoken of by graybeards around the firelight to frighten children. But darkness does not sleep. It only lies in wait for men to forget and lower their guards. Little did Edward know that, soon enough, social inequity would be the least of his worries, and his fortitude, strength, and noble heart would be tested to their very limits, perhaps even beyond. Sweet. So we have an origin story, ladies and gentlemen. Little Edward will soon learn of his destiny. Cool. Welcome to Age of Fear, the Undead King. The next few levels will teach you the basics of the game and introduce our story. I will play the introduction. Thank you. Okay, so I'll give you guys a little bit of a rundown since I am relatively familiar with the Age of Fear series. And yeah. essentially... What the developer does is he goes and he works on all these different tales. And this is kind of his overview map, his world map. I think it only went about this far. I don't remember exactly how far it went, but it went like, like maybe to here. And I think down to like here. I think that was like the full map. Maybe I'm a little bit off. But he's added quite a bit more, about 30% more. This feels like more than 30%, but about 30% more of the map. So there will be other places that these tales take place coming soon. I'm assuming that's why the map got bigger. Um, anyhow, so he has Age of Fear, the Undead King. I want to say Age of Fear 2, the Chaos Lords. I, I can never remember the second game in the series. I'm sorry, guys and gals. And Age of Fear 3, the Legend. And all of those tell different tales. There's usually two campaigns. I think there's always two campaigns. Where you have like one group, one faction, like humans in this case, and then the undead is the other faction. You have the elves and the dwarves in the third game, and I assume you have the demons and something else in the in the second game. Anyhow, they're all in this same world. They're all kind of interconnected, yet I, I don't know if it's necessarily a story from beginning to end, like it's a narrative, so you have to start with the first game, then go to the second game, and then play the third. I think they're all separate stories within this. And again, the developer, I'm sure, will watch this and he'll be able to correct me if I'm wrong. But either way, anytime he comes up with something new and exciting that he decides to add to the game or a new engine happens or whatever the case is, he updates all of his games with that stuff, with that content. So I believe this world map will probably be, I'm, I'm assuming again, I'm not sure if it's ready for it yet, but it should be in all of the games moving forward. And like I said... He's able to come back to and keep adding to the games as he goes. So you'll see there's a little bit of DLC here, a little bit of DLC there. And those are just like additional stories. Sometimes there's like an extra hero. And it's just a way of kind of keeping intertwined in this whole world that exists that the developers created. So I think that's pretty cool. Like I said, he's still going back and fixing, updating, improving his first game. And he's still working on his third game. And then he even released like a free-to-play with random battles type version of the game. So the developers, you know, he puts a lot of work into this. So I, I definitely appreciate it. Anyway, let's let's get on with the story. I'm sorry, guys and gals. All right, Goblin Hunter. Edward's chance to impress influential nobles, merchants, and eligible ladies was... Edward's chance to impress influential nobles, merchants, and eligible ladies was drawn to a close. Afterwards... He would have to return home to play the role of the dutiful fourth son to better his family's position through selfless service without regard for his own ambitions. As luck would have it, fate provided Edward with a chance encounter with the king's chamberlain, Tybalt, an aging courtier whose eyes betrayed an incisive wisdom at odds with the foppish silks in which he was clad. Ah, young Edward. I see that the hunt holds a little challenge for you, and that the camaraderie of the other noblemen is little to your liking. I, however, offer you a proposition that may be of great interest. A boon I couldn't accept, sir. This is no challenge to entertain and amuse you, boy. I dare to presume that your father still has a light purse, does he not? And you too have little coin to spend, am I right? 
Yes, sir. Though it pains me to admit it, you speak the truth. Then listen to my proposition. The King wants to eliminate the goblins looming at the edge of our camp, and you could perhaps do something about them. The King is hardly without the resources for monetary reward. Edward's eyes lit up. Goblins could be quite dangerous, but they were no match for his sword. Because he was the fourth son, he had practiced harder, trained longer, and made more effort than any of his brothers. Goblins, sir. They've stolen enough game and harassed enough men that the king is willing to pay a handsome fee to the man who gets rid of them. Since you are the son of an old friend, I could see my way to granting an advance of 500 coins for you to prepare for the job. Thank you, I'd be honored. Not so fast, boy. I will lend you some armor in better condition than the shambles on your back. Wouldn't want to return you to my old friend with scratches on your pretty face, or with any parts missing. Tibble chuckled. I'd be much obliged, sir. Thank you again for this opportunity. You are quite welcome. I've seen how well you handle your sword, but I recommend you take a few of the mercenaries from camp with you. There are quite a few goblins out there. No sense risking your neck for gold if you don't make it home to spend it. When should I begin? Now, follow me and we'll see what you look like in a proper suit of iron. Edward followed Tibble to his encampment filled with the heady anticipation of a real fight and the prospect of some coin for an honest job. All right, that sounds good to me. Well, there's a lot more story here than there was in the third game that I can recall. Don't get me wrong, there was quite a bit of story in the third game as well, but I, I think I, I can see this is where he started. This is where he wanted his tale to begin. And I can see like how much extra is here, how much of the story is being built from this. It's really cool to see. I like it a lot. Alright, so we have good Sir Edward here. He is a knight. And we can get some footmen and a bowman. Uh, we only have 500 gold, so we're going to go with one footman. Uh-huh. Oh, we can rename our units. Not going to do that. Uh, well, I might if I can't pronounce the name, but not going to do it otherwise. Brody and Nicholas. Cool. Alright, we broke. We're going. Oh, uh, items. Before we leave, we should select... Yes, I, I'm aware of things. I should select items. We have the choice of a quality sword or a knight's mace. We're obviously going to do mm, double damage. Okay. Yeah, no, we're going to do the, uh, the knight's mace, I think. Do I have to buy it? Oh, I, I, maybe I have to buy it. It says equip, though. I'm sorry, guys. Sometimes I, I'm still... Oh, I suppose... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So if this says uh, sell, then I have it. If it says buy, I don't have it. I, I Sometimes I forget things, guys and girls. I'm, I'm apologizing here to y'all. Y'all's is... A patent of nobility. Uh, it does not count toward the item's l limit. And uh, plus one attack, usable by knights. Okay, cool. So we just have that. All right, so I, I'm not sure why he's like, oh, we're going to get you some better stuff. And he didn't. All right, a bunch of artifacts and things. I, I know all of this stuff, guys and gals. Essentially, only your heroes are able to equip all of like stuff like weapons and armors and shields and jewelry and any of the miscellaneous relics and things and artifacts. Whereas your basic soldiers, your footmen and your bowmen, they are only able to use potions. And it shows right here in the tabs. And that's basically the thing that you need to know. All right, we're going to go. We're going to get into a fight. And it's probably going to go fine. Tibble's tale proved true. Even a novice scout could have seen the Greenskin's tracks leading from the homestead off into the nearby woodland. However, as easy as the tracks were to follow, they still led Edward's party on quite a journey, moving from one campsite to another. Edward's party knew they were getting close when they eventually found campfire ashes that were still warm. A few more hours of travel saw them finally catch up to their quarry who hadn't even bothered to post sentries. A few of the goblins were starting a fire and drinking their signature dark and heady grog. Remnants of what might prove to be their last supper lie strewn about the camp. 
Let the filthy creatures choke on their nasty ale as they die, Edward thought to himself as he signaled his men to rush the camp. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's go and get this done. We're loading into the battle, ladies and gentlemen, and we will go and we will battle these greenskin orky goblin, I guess, goblin-y scum. We found you, greeny goblins. Boys, look, a tiny boy knight. Uh-huh. A boy knight? You little... There it is. Oh, puny knight got angry. He need a smack. Edward has the ability to charge. If Edward is not engaged at the beginning of a turn, his next attack will be more powerful. That's cool. Okay, so things you need to know about Age of Fear. Uh, we have three different zoom levels. We start off at the furthest zoom. And we can kind of see the overview map. I think it's the furthest zoom. Maybe I'm wrong. Nope, we start off in the second zoom. So the furthest zoom, you press the one key to zoom out to the farthest and you can see everything. If you want to play it at this level, that's fine. You're totally open and welcome to do so. Two brings you to the medium zoom where you start off at. And three brings you up in close, where I like to play. So this is how I'm going to play. We have four goblins up against the three of us. I like our chances. I like our chances. Now, fools rush in, and I am a quite often command. very foolish, but I am not going to rush Frankly, in. Bedrow has fleas. That's a weird thing to say. Glad it's not too windy his today. Bed roll has fleas. I'm actually. I think I moved too far. If I'm being honest, I was doing this yesterday Need too. To top off me quiver. So we can hover over these guys and we can see how far they can move. But that's literally how far they can move. So that's like their center point. So they'll actually be slightly over that line. So it's better Orders. to be back a little further to be safe. All right, that's it. I'm gonna end my turn. With uh, knights and oftentimes wolves and like animals that can go pretty far you would assume they're fast moving creatures you could usually do a segmented move meaning you can move once and then move again in like a different direction so like you can go around this guy and then boom attack the back line which is very very useful all right we're gonna end the turn yep see i stepped too close i was outside of their movement range but not outside of their other range uh, the goblin can't shoot us. We can't shoot him. We can, however, you should have brought a sheet. shoot that guy, and our knight will will take this guy out. Rush them down. <coughs> and this dude's just gonna sit here. It's gonna be fine. In fact, yeah, no, that's fine. He'll step up just a little bit to get within range, I assume. No, he didn't. Edward has received high morale. His combat values have improved. Well, I mean, that's nice, but... Air mail delivery. Yeah, so that's the thing that happened. All right, so we're actually going to go chase this guy down now. Out of my way. Whee! He did. All right, so the battle has been won. Victory is ours. Now, normally, in most games, you would just leave. Now, there is an ability to auto-loot, but I still like to go and clear every level. This is just a me thing. So if you don't like to do that, you do not have to do that. But after the battle has been won and victory is yours and you've claimed it, you can go ahead and you can uh, say no and then end your turn once. Let's talk about upgrading our heroes. I say after the battle's over, press the N key as in nerd. You're welcome. Me and uh, dull, I know, it sire. was beautiful. Need to Thank top you. off me quiver. And uh, yeah, you'll actually get to see all, all the names I pop up. And I'll box some tab and wedge. Okay. <laughs> you'll see all the names and stuff pop up, like grain bags. You'll see the names of your characters. If you want to play with that on, by all means, do what what you enjoy. Do what you like. Think me bed row, but I know a lot please. of people would be quite annoyed if I had that on Rush the whole them time down. while I was doing the murder. And it's understandable. Like, I get it. I right. between the ribs. Understood. So one thing to be aware of, there is They'll oftentimes hidden hit a treasure loot. Dead one for sure. Better start running, mate. No, wait till he's done talking. Uh, there's hidden treasure loot oftentimes in crates and boxes and things. And if you look, usually it will tell you if there's something inside of it. Like the treasure chest here. If we hover over it, we can see on the right-hand side, like right over here where my mouse is. Uh, healing brew, pearl quality helmet, I'm assuming. And then in this barrel, there will be gold. It does not seem to tell you if there is going to be any kind of creatures that come out of whatever item you're out murdering. Out of my way. So it's possible Push that I kill this down. crate and some rats will pop out and kill us. It didn't seem Settle to happen this time horse. around, but that doesn't mean that it wouldn't happen. Or Orders, happen. my liege. 
Me blades getting so this is side. a me tactical turn-based strategy game, which is definitely kind of the Just bread and butter target. Just tell me where to aim. of what it is that I do. So you guys uh, should be very familiar this with this. The, the big difference day. is it's not on a hex or a uh, like a, a box or a square uh, based grid. There's no grid here. It's all free range movement, which means you can build blockades. Like you can move your character slightly more, and look, he can no longer get through here, or you can oh, leave just him just enough room dice. that he can squeeze through. And same thing. Like you're trying to block out uh, enemies getting to your archers, you're able to do that. So it gives Sell you a little bit horse. more freedom. And it makes you think. Injury. It makes you use like different Try to skill stop. set than what you have with just basic. Uh, was it like uh, hex or grid based combat? So I like it to an extent. At times, I will I will admit that I do you get frustrated with it because I feel like some guys Orders should be able leech. to fit in certain places. Me and they don't. Getting dull, sire. It is what it is. Um, like I said, there's Need definitely positives and definitely negatives. Just tell me where to aim. Um, Overall, I feel like it is a positive, and if nothing else, Roy it's different, the right? And sometimes just having something Your different is a mate. really good thing. All right, doesn't look like there's gonna be any way. nasty surprises. Oh, treasure chest, che treasure chest, treasure chest cracked. Uh, let's see what those filthy goblins have hidden away in here. Well, that was my plan, man. You didn't have to interrupt me for that. This shall so be rude. a glorious day. Have my sword. Yeah. Yes, my king. Please. All right, stop it. Thank you. you leave me no choice. Out of my way. And here we go. We got 100 gold, quality helmet, a pearl, some healing brew. That's it. And we can look around the map Just one last time. Target. And we don't see anything else. A few different command. ways we can do this. Have my I'm still going to move. Be a sometimes we find hidden stuff. Like maybe I walk up and get close to this, and all of a sudden there's a way I can interact with it that's not there. And you're like, oh, you found a hidden yes, my king. popsicle root. Something. I Saddle don't, I don't my know. horse. All right, I'm going to go to the full zoomed out thing. There's nothing else with a name on it other than our three characters, and I think I've been everywhere else with my with my guys. So we're pretty much done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit escape, and I'm going to end the battle, and I'm going to say yes. And this is our new and only uh, objective. Now, once we get out of the tutorialized area. Butterport. Uh, sorry, once we get out of the tutorialized area, uh, a bunch of random encounters will pop up, along with storyline missions, places where we can go buy and sell stuff. Um, I think this is the first game that implements an actual base for us, which is interesting and neat. I like it. Anyway, uh, we're going to hop in here. We're going to get this started, but we're about to break off the first episode. So, Worthy Prey. What do we got? Edward didn't have to think about his attack as his well-trained sword arm hacked and slashed through the forest's intruders with great ease. Edward looked over the carnage of the goblin camp. Now it was strewn with green-skinned corpses with faces fixed into grotesque masks of surprise and terror. Edward felt almost disappointed at the ease of this task. Surely not enough to make any lasting impression on the king. Even a squire could have led this party and slain this motley crew. Still, it was good coin, and he had proven he could handle the task put before him. A tracker broke Edward from his thoughts. Sir, I found the tracks of a much larger creature. I believe that cave in the distance is an ogre's lair. What is your command? I say that he will make for worthy prey. But sir, ogres are fearsome beasts. I was once part of a militia band sent to fight one, and before we could subdue him, he had killed several of our best men. Inwardly, Edward's spirit rose, for this was a worthy opponent for any knight. He didn't want to seem foolhardy and rush into peril, so he responded in a serious tone. Since we are this close to the cave, I am sure this area is part of his territory. He poses more of a threat to the folk living near this forest than that band of goblins did. By slaying him, we protect them. The tracker began to object, but Edward did not listen. He led the way up the hill and into the cave, and the hunting party followed him after only the slightest of hesitations. As they entered the cave, they nearly retched. The air hit them like a hot and fetid wall. The party slowly descended into the darkened cave with Edward at the lead. 
then spied the hulking figure of an ogre with crude rotting skins draped over a nine-foot wall of muscle and sinew. The beast saw them in that same moment. It let out a fierce scream and charged the party. Well, that seems bad. Oh, is it literally just going to throw us into the battle? Oh. What is that stench? Lord, have mercy on my nose! It looks like the owner of the cave is home. Uh, oh, oh, there we go. Roar, roar. And he'd rather not be disturbed. Well, I was hoping to get some new units and stuff. There's a whole bunch of little baby goblins over here. Uh, yeah, so the ogre's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. But assuming we're able to defeat him, which I truly believe we will be able to do. Um... Yeah, no, no, I mean, we're, we're, we're almost as strong as, you know, it's fine. We'll, we'll be okay. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be a tale for another time. I'm going to break off the first episode here with just the first battle. It'll be a little bit more, or a little bit less exposition, a little bit more action in the uh, future episodes. So if you're like, man, you just talked a lot about a bunch of stuff that it's fine. I always like to kind of share a little bit of my experience, my knowledge of a game, and just stuff that I enjoy about certain titles and things. I know, not everybody appreciates it, and that's fine. So moving forward, you can expect less of that and more action and getting into the game and all that stuff a bit quicker. Okay, if you guys want more information about the game or where to get the game, those links will be down below in the description of the video. Do keep in mind this is part of a three-part series right now, and that is Age of Fear, the Undead King Gold, Age of Fear 2, the Chaos Lord Gold, and Age of Fear 3, the Legend there are various little DLCs and expansions to each of those games as well that you can grab and pick up and enjoy. And if you guys are like, eh, it kind of looks okay, but I kind of want to try it first. Well, if you were paying attention, somewhere in the midst of this video, there was a giveaway code for this. So there will be a code that has flashed on the screen at some point during this video. And if you input that code and you replace the question mark with the number you will get this game for free because the developer's awesome and he sent me some codes to give away to you guys. So if you keep watching the series, you'll keep seeing the codes pop up and you might be able to win it. I know, I decided to do the kind of surprise shock at the end that yes, there was a code you need to go back or hopefully you noticed it and wrote it down. I don't know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I like to do things a little bit different, a little bit weird every once in a while. Anyhow, if you guys want to get your hands on a game and you didn't win the code, and you're not sure about the game, you're like, eh, it looks okay, but I really want to see some more of the gameplay, or I want to try it for myself. The developer did release Age of Fear, The Free World, which is free to play for everyone. And essentially, you go onto the world map, you get to choose from, I think it's five, I don't remember how many, but you get to choose from various different factions or groups to start with. And you basically get to hop in, build your own mercenary company, and go around and do random battles and just experience the game. You just don't get any of the cool storyline stuff that comes with the numbered titles in the series. Anyway, guys and gals, that's it for me for this episode. In the next episode, less babbling, more story and murder and death and killing and mayhem and madness. Subscribe to the channel if you want and just stick around. Check it out. Anyway, folks, until the very next episode, I am Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you guys so much for stopping by the Freak Show and I will see you later. <laughs>